Today I'm going to be working on my S52 OBD2 24 valve E30 swap harness. Uh, basically, it's just a whole bunch of OEM parts. It's the actual OBD2 harness. Uh, you need a couple of like coolant. You need a brown top coolant E30 sensor. You need one of these connectors to actually add on to the, the harness and replace some of the connectors with a different style so you can actually put it this sensor and do it cleanly. There are other ways to do it. You could splice in, cut off off your E30 harness or things like that. This is the way to do it the cleanest so that's what I'm going to do. You need all the new pins to pin on the wires. On very early models, 84 and 85, they have a square connector, but everything after that has what's called a C101 connector. It's this round connector that goes onto the chassis harness. So this is where your wiring harness connects to your chassis. You need a whole bunch of pins for that. These right here. I got all of this new stuff from FCP Euro, and I will include links in the description so you guys can kind of go through it all. I'll try to label it and make sense of it because if you've never done a wiring project before, this is extremely tricky and tedious. But if you do have some introduction to making little harnesses, making little adaptions, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. And then lastly, you're gonna need to build a chart. Here's my chart for my, it's a 85 production year, 86 uh, sale model. So it's a 86, 1986 E20, or ETA, and I have, all of the outputs from the chassis harness. I've labeled those right here. And then all the standard pins for the X20 actual engine harness. I've got that right here. And then you just sort of match pin to pin what you're gonna do. And then on these, they have another connector in the glove box area. It's called a C104. And it's got like three pins that you need to connect. Instead of doing that, and using uh, another one because they're very difficult to find. I think they might even be impossible to buy new. What I'm going to do is cut those off and then replace it with an entirely new connector, an 8-pin connector, so that when I get my ECU, I can add in new pins and new signals very easily. But, I mean, let's get right to it. Basically, whenever you're converting a harness, you have your new pin, the C101, that goes to the E30, just like pops in like that, tightens on, no big deal. And then you have your old pin, this is the X20 that fits on an E36. More pins in the X20, definitely have to eliminate some, but we'll probably fill up about half of this C110. All I'm gonna do is go through these wires that I've already trimmed, find the, uh, find the colors that I absolutely need, so we'll start with like alternators. Here's the blue wire, that's the alternator. And I just went and I labeled everything on the harness that I could so I can strip the ones I think I need and then go run a continuity between, where's the alternator, right here. So here's the alternator. I can run a continuity between here and here, make sure it's the correct one, pin it, and mark it to be put in the C101 in position number one. It's that first one. Cool, so let's just get on with that. Okay, so in continuity mode on my multimeter, it just makes a sound if the connection is complete. So I can put it on this blue one, put it on this alternator. And it goes to this wire right here, obviously, because it beeps. Now, I tried this with the crimping tool, it doesn't work. Just do it with a little, just do it with these. There probably is an actual tool for this, but I doubt anyone's gonna go out and buy it unless they are doing a lot of these, so. After all those have been pinned on, and crimp down, all you're gonna wanna do is put some solder in there. All 
I have my X20 connector for reference for the pins to the cables. So I can check here for the number and then go to the cable. And then I have my C101 that I get to plug all these puppies into. So, first pin is pin number one. And that one is for the alternator. That goes to pin 25. I can check pin 25. Is this light blue cable right here. Got no black or anything, it's just blue. So that goes to pin number one. Next is oil pressure, which is uh, pin five. Go to 23 on this one. These pins are gonna be different for you guys. You're gonna to need to come up with your own list. But uh, the X20, the X20 adapter should be the same, the OBD2. This is our rear O2 sensor. We, now, I don't need these rear O2 sensors. You might, I don't know what you're doing with your life, but <laughs> I don't. So all I'm gonna do is kind of map out the length that I want, cut just a smidge extra cut this rear O2 sensor off, just like that. Now, these will be the wires that we use for our new oil level sensor for the E34 oil level with our new connector right here, our new boot, little waterproof boot right here, and our pins, and we're gonna make a whole new one. Then, what we'll do is we'll go all the way up here to the actual harness where it all meets and goes to the ECU and stuff, and we're gonna trim off these wires that go from the O2 sensor from the actual harness, and then we're gonna bring them back over here to our C101 connector to be plumbed in for the oil level, repurposed. Strip that. These are just need to solder and then they'll pop them in here. One, two, three. Bada bing, bada boom. That'll be that. Look how clean that looks. Awesome. I can get rid of this one, I believe, too. Reverse fuel. This is totally unnecessary. I can totally eliminate it, but I'll go through that in a second. Okay, so I found out this wire is this wire, but just by pulling on a bit, see it's shorter. So if I pull, or if I, oof. But this is the wire. So I can go separate all these. Bring this puppy. Figure out where it is over here. So I can confirm that I just found this wire. Go back as far as I can. Cut it off, pull it out. There we go, that's long enough to get all the way over there. I'm gonna try to push this straight through. See how that goes. Okay, now to do that two more times. Okay, with the brown wire that is now going to be our ground trimmed, I'm gonna go ahead and split this ground splice. Now that everything's soldered, go ahead and put these puppies in. What was this? Uh, this is gonna be my static P1 
pin two. Grab that guy. Okay. Black one's going to be my dynamic pin ten. All right, for the new coolant temperature sensor for the cluster on the E30, you're gonna take the standard uh, OBD2 temperature sensor, which doubles as for the E30 and, or sorry, for the cluster and for the ECU. You'll trim off one and two right on the connector. And then I'm gonna make a slit somewhere right about here-ish just in the sheath. Like that. And then pull these two out. There we go, these are our wires. Now I'm going to use one of these, you only need one for the E30 cluster sensor. Boom. Just gonna go ahead and solder all these, put all the connectors on, and button it up pretty much. There we go. Definitely was having some issues before. On here. There we go. That's our coolant temp one and two. Easy peasy. Brown is pin number two, which is the ground. Lastly, black is pin number one, which is the dynamic oil level. Alrighty, it is now time for me to go and eliminate whatever I don't need. There are a bunch of things in here that are just unnecessary. Like for example, this big red power cable, don't need it. Okay, now I have the spaghetti of wiring and I still haven't even Eliminated, this is the uh, X6, six, six, or 60, 61 connector right here, I believe. And the only thing you need from here is, this is all like uh, secondary air control emission stuff. The only thing you need from here is pin one, which is for the OB2 check engine light. Okay, with that trimmed, uh, all it is is this gray wire, all this stuff is trash. So that'll all get pulled through and then go into my spaghetti pile here, which I'll eventually trim off at the connector. And that's it. See how easy that is? So here's my vehicle speed sensor. I know I ran out of proper tape to label this stuff, but it'll have to do. This is gonna be my check engine. And then I'm going to need to pull my tack and uh, fuel economy ones as well. They're in here. So looking at this connector, you've got fuel consumption is number 24. Go to this guy. 24 is black and white. White with a black stripe. I'm gonna go with this one. Right. So, pull this. Find this black and white stripe guy. Maybe this is it right here. Yep, that's it right there. That's my economy. Go ahead and make a label. Got to remove, this is the evaporation purge, some sort of a safety, not safety system, some sort of emissions system. This will come out. I just got to figure out which line this is. Get rid of that puppy. I think it's probably... Let's 
to it. It's got a yellow and a red wire to it. I think I saw it move. There it is, right here. This guy. Yeah. So we're gonna trace it back. It goes all the way over here to this relay. So this relay is connected to the to that system over there. This is the connector that connects to that relay, and then it's a another connector. And I think that connects to the starter or something. But all we gotta do is put them down. Boom. This whole nonsense. Don't need it. The last thing that I have to do is go ahead and make a huge mess on the floor. That's what it was. Glad I got that over with. But here, these are all the wires that I need to go into the inside of the car. It's all tack and that kind of shit. So these will all come down. And then I bought this eight pin connector. And this is just gonna be what connects. Um, oh my lord, there's stuff everywhere. Nice and clean. That's our connector. So you don't have to screw around with those, those like MIA, or not MIA, NLA connectors, the C104s, you just replace the whole thing. You have to do the same thing on the body harness, but you saw how, uh, how easy and clean it is. Boom, this is my connector. It'll run my tack, it'll run my, it'll run my everything. It's not a big deal. Just make sure you, before you heat shrink it up, make sure you know which is which. So I've got gray, brown, black, and white on here. Those are my pin uh, one, two, three, four. And then I'll just put some heat shrink on here and finish the the way it looks. Oh yeah, okay. Definitely needed to do that. So I got all this. I'm gonna wrap it. much freaking extra stuff. So all we'll do is go grab these, pull them one by one, figure out where they are, and just trim them off. Everything else, you're good to go. Okay. So this is pretty much what the harness looks like after all the modifications are done. As close to factory as I could get it. I really wanted it to look clean, seamless. So you can't tell that this has been opened. Can't tell any of that's been changed. All this wiring looks factory. This is uh, the new connectors and things. This is the new oil, oil sending unit. Alternator stuff I didn't touch. The starter cable. 
These relays have been slightly modified, as you guys saw. My Mac, and then my single OBD1, or sorry, not OBD1, E30 C101 port right there. Super clean. All the extra bullshit that was removed from this harness. It's amazing how much stuff is there. But this is uh, like X69 and whatever connector, and then uh, one of these connectors for, I think, fuel temp or something. I have a relay in there. I have that evap I have a whole bunch of these power cables that weren't necessary but that's how it looks i hope that this was uh, helpful for you guys seeing what you can delete what you can't delete what you still need how to trim it all how to crimp it all and everything uh, like i was saying in the beginning that connector you're gonna have to figure out what your body harness is to get that correct but everything else should be the same going obd2 obd1 think it's a little easier, there's less stuff to delete. That's an OBD-1 right there that I pulled off the S52, but we're going OBD-2 just for more control, better control. But look at that, finally happy. So it took several days, big project, but I think that this will be a good video for anyone trying to do it. Good luck, peace out. So I